All right, here's the thing. I don't know One Piece, but do you really need to know anything about the character and where it comes from to enjoy the figure? Definitely not. I'm a firm believer that it can work the other way around. You can learn so much about a character from showing interest in the figure first. Like, I learned that Nami's physique gradually matures over each arc and the time skip. <laughs> Sorry, children. Anyway, in saying all that, I bought this figure for the extra Luffy faceplate and gold chest accessory. But I do have to admit that this was a lot more fun to pose and photograph than I thought. And for a spindly figure with a small frame and joints, this is surprisingly really well articulated. And yes, of course, I learned a lot more about Nami other than her physical changes. So let's jump right into it. Romance Dawn or East Blue Nami. So this is Nami as we're first introduced to her from the Romance Dawn arc to the Syrup Village arc. So we get her initial trademark look consisting of a blue and white striped shirt which is broken up into two parts, an upper hard plastic torso and a softer plastic lower torso. Her trademark orange miniskirt with circles is also made from the same softer rubbery plastic material. And yes, for all you perverts out there, Nami is wearing underwear. <gasps> her look is finished off with her iconic brown high-heeled boots. The head sculpts look great. Nami has her shorter hair here, which has a bit of shading to it that uh, gives you a bit more color variance. The faces are clean, the details are sharp, and we get four pretty solid choices. A beautiful Nami smile, an eyes closed happy expression, a teeth gritting angry in battle faceplate, and a comedic extremely peed off option as well. The One Piece line is right up there with the Naruto line in terms of faceplate expressions. I am hoping we get more for Nami, but these are really fun and cover some pretty good ground for a standard Nami release. The figure has a nice satin finish to it and feels really solid in hand. Like I mentioned earlier, Nami is pretty slim, especially with her arms, but nothing feels fragile or like it's gonna break. She's pretty good to handle and I haven't had any trouble with my copy so far. All right, so let's take a look at how well Nami moves. And for a spindly, small framed female figure, it actually has a lot of great articulation, all except for the neck, uh, which is where we're gonna start. And it's because of the way that her hair lays flat on her neck. She's not gonna get any range going up. That's as much as we get. But looking down, really no problems at all, which is good. Side to side rotation and some okay left and right tilt. Not the best, but it is there. Most of the movement is gonna come from the neck. So for her, for her arms, way past 90 degrees going up, which is fantastic. We have 360 rotation there. She can bring her arms in. She doesn't have any butterfly joints, but she can bring her arms in about that much, which isn't great and it's because of her chest actually, the way that her chest is sculpted, even at this stage of the arc, uh, it does get in the way, if you know what I mean. Uh, there is a swivel there at the shoulder, if you can see that, but there's also a swivel there at the bicep, which is hidden underneath the sleeve, which is great. We have fantastic double jointed elbows, and of course your swivel and hinges at the wrist. So arms are great. For her torso, at the upper half, she doesn't get too much, but when you use the lower half of her waist as well, it's decent, not too bad. Goes back about this much. And uh, her ab section here is a rubbery soft plastic as well as her skirt and it does split into two parts the back and the, uh, the front so she does have a waist swivel traditional waist swivel which is good it's on a ball joint so you do get you know a bit of movement there for tilting and things like that so for her legs she can get actually 180 splits uh, the skirt is a little bit in the way, but um, yeah, that's that's a pretty good 180 splits there. Going backward and forward, side to side is also not a problem. A great spread there. 
we do have a thigh cut and you can see it just underneath the skirt. It is a visible cut. It is a single joint there for the knees, which gets past 90, which is okay. We do have a rotation there at the boot, at the ankle. Not too much going down, not too much going up either. Your traditional toe hinge, but uh, we do get some pretty good ankle articulation. So uh, yeah, other than that, other than her neck, like I mentioned, pretty good articulation uh, and more than enough uh, for Nami to get into some really fun dynamic poses. Uh, straight up a neutral like vanilla poses because she does have heels and because of the shape of her feet, uh, you might find it a little bit difficult for her to stand up straight, but you know, once you get her into that kind of sweet spot, it shouldn't be a problem. Have fun. So I essentially bought Nami for the accessories, not specifically her accessories, but she does come with a nice lineup. A pair of fists. They're not your traditional lock and load punch em up fists. They're more like, uh, well, they're more like this, I guess. Two open palm hands for pretty much anything really. A right index finger pointing hand. A left and right clenched together hands for those, oh, thank you. Oh, pretty, pretty, please. And a pair of bow staff holding hands for holding her pretty simple brown bow staff. It's not anything special, but it's brown, it's straight, and it does the trick. The next little accessory we get is a bit more exciting. It's a chest of gold. I got a chest of gold. I got a chest of gold. I mean, pirates, chest of gold, it only makes sense, right? And I guess you could also use it for pretty much anything. It's a toy photographer's delight, plus it opens and closes. Open, close, open, close, open, close. The last little bonus accessory we get is a huge cheek-to-cheek -cheek grinning faceplate for Luffy. Who doesn't want more faceplate options for their figures? So I think Tamashi have hit a gold mine with the One Piece line, given that the collectors keep buying the figures, but in my limited research, I must have went through like 20 different outfits for Nami, and I mean completely different, not just colour changes or hair colour changes. That's 20 different Nami figures that could potentially be made. I'm guessing this is probably her most iconic and most popular outfit, not only because that's how she looks when we're first introduced to Nami, but it's the outfit that fits in with the rest of the Romance Dawn East Blue Straw Hat crew. This release isn't going to blow your socks off, but I think it's a step in the right direction. I can't speak for the rest of the line before Romance Dawn Luffy, but from what I've heard, it's a bit of a mixed bag. This, in my opinion, is a solid release. Is it better than the previous stuff? I don't know. But I think it stands on par with Romance Dawn Luffy in terms of quality and fun factor. I think One Piece fans will really like this one and for more casual collectors like myself it's a one and done piece that'll look great with the rest of the original crew once they're released so yeah i say why not pick yourself up a nami the price is a little bit steeper than luffy but if you don't end up liking it you can always sell her and keep the chest of gold and luffy faceplate Anyway, that's it for this review. Drop us a like if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you guys think about the figure in the comments. I'm slowly getting through this heavy month, but Saito will be next. So make sure you're subbed, and I'll see you guys all back for the next one. Remember to do your push-ups, and as always, Yoshiko!